we're going to do another pantograph driven um, ellipse mechanism. At this time, it's being driven by a gear pair. Um, well, we're going to work on. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, figure 183. No, 181. There. Um, so the pantograph there is attached, each leg of the pantograph is attached to a gear. Um, and we'll see how to model that in um, uh, GX Web when I share uh, my screen. Uh, so here we are. Now the gear pair just means that one so one circle is rotating in one direction, the other circle is rotating at the same speed in the other direction. We can model that um, without really drawing the circles, which just get in the way. Um, here's a line that joins the center of the two gears, and we'll position it uh, symmetrically with respect to the y-axis. And we'll call that distance r. Uh, for the radius of the of the gear wheel, and call that distance r. Now, um, to model the gear pair, we just need to have a point on that circle, and we'll we'll, we'll join it with a line. So this is the point of attachment to um, that gear wheel, um, and we'll have another. line here. So this angle um, here, let me draw it in. Um, this triangle is theta, and as theta grows, C is going to move um, in that direction clockwise. Now if we put an angle in here, now we want that um, to move and we want this gear to move, not clockwise, but counterclockwise. So we'll make this thing grow as um, as theta grows. Um, if now it just depends on where we want. Uh, we know so we could make it theta, for example. And so this is the situation where the two gears are. Um, so let, let's just watch how they go. Um, let's move theta. And you can see uh, one is moving clockwise, the other one is moving counterclockwise. Let's stop that behavior. Now let's, uh, let's bring theta down to somewhere near where it started. Okay, these, these two lines are at different the two points of attachment are at different um, distances uh, from the center of the um, of the respective uh, gears. Uh, so we'll constrain. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm constraining the perpendicular distance from C to that line. Um, what I wanted to do was uh, specify distance from B to D and from A to C. Yeah, I'll just pick A and C. Yeah. Okay, so this is length A, this is length B, and now we can add a pantograph. Uh, straightforwardly, make that length C, make that length also C, get the halfway point. And add a couple of links here. And we make sure that this length is C over two. And this length is C over two. And 
to now as we turn the handle, uh, the pantograph is doing its thing. Uh, what is its thing? Let's select the point H and get the locus uh, as state of various. Uh, there we see it's uh, a pleasant looking ellipse. Well, is it actually an ellipse? Of course, we can put it out in our symbolic panel here. Uh, as for its equation, and <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Notice um, uh, something missing. We don't see any mention of the variable c at the size of our pantograph in this equation. So therefore, if we change c, look, in fact, it is drawing, going to draw the same ellipse. If we change it too much, the pantograph disappears. Um, so the, the, the size of the pantograph doesn't matter as long as it's big enough to encompass the Ellipse, what, what does matter, of course, are um, uh, A and B. Uh, notice also R, it's not, it doesn't matter either. Uh, again, as long as it's within reasonable limits. Uh, but B and C are the ones that make a difference, sorry. A and B are the things that make a difference. Now, when you're drawing, when you, if you made this physically with a couple of gears and attached your um, attached the pantograph, what would happen if you kind of moved one of the gears around before you constructed? In other words, this is constructed such that the um, these angles are equal, but you could change it so there's a different. Um, so that instead of theta, you were getting um, theta plus phi. Well, let's make it a little bit simpler. We'll make it, let's say we added 90 degrees onto it. By two, plus theta. Now here we're gonna see, we get, we're getting the lips. Um, Oh, I didn't mind to do that. I'm um, changing B here. Um, I wanted to move it with respect to theta. So here we get an ellipse, but it's uh, at, a, at an angle to the X and Y axes. And we can inspect this equation. And you see we've got an x, y term in there, um, kicking it off uh, to some angle. So the, this is a nice um, ellipsograph with a gear pair in it. <laughs>